Good afternoon. Um, I am in my kitchen and I'm making some candles right now. Um, I have an event coming up. For those who don't know, my name is Candace Jackson. I have a company, or Seek Life Candle Company and more. So I make um, essential oil soy candles. Um, they are made from 100% therapeutic grade essential oils um, made by Young Living. So I have various fragrances. And then I use a soy wax. So it's um, healthy for you, healthy for the environment. There are no dyes or chemicals um, or anything like that in my candles. It's just wax and just oils. So this is what I have so far. I just breathe in the beginning. Um, love story, summer breeze, whole verse. And I am in the process of making some more right now um, for the event. But if you notice... Each candle has a quote that is specific to the type of candle that it is. Um, and so that's something that um, is important to me, uplifting and encouraging people through words. And so I wanted to implement that on the candles that I'm making. So that's um, one reason that it's Speak Life, because I want you to not only get the benefits of the essential oils, but I want, if I can provide... Um, a small bit of encouragement, I want to be able to do that as well. So what I want to talk about today is um, how do you know when it's time to let a person go, to let a relationship go, or um, how do you recognize the signs that you've outgrown someone, or maybe that person doesn't have your best interest in mind. So long story short, if I can, um, this week I was invited to be a guest on a local podcast here just to kind of talk about my business ventures and, you know, what I've been up to and how my businesses are expanding. Because not only do I have a candle business, but I also have a home-based baking business called Sister and Cookies. Um, and so I bake um, home-baked goods, pies, cupcakes, cookies, all different types of things. So during the interview, one of the questions that was asked of us was, um, what were some of the obstacles that you faced when you first started out and, you know, what are some things that you had to overcome to, in order to be successful? Well, my answer to that question was because I'm passionate about the things that I do and the things that I create, I had a hard time charging people. And um, what I mean by that is because I love to share, I love seeing people enjoy my food. I love people seeing, um, you know, tasting, like, I want to, I'm that person that if I make something for you, I'm sitting there just, like, looking at you, like, how does it taste? How is, is it good? You know, because I want to know, like, that excites me to know that I was able to soothe somebody's taste buds or their hunger or their appetite or, um, you know, with my candles, if I'm able to boost their mood with the cool burst because it has some uplifting aromas and everything in it. So that was my answer that I have a hard time, or when I started out, I had a hard time charging people because I just, I like to do things for people. You know, I, of course, growing in business, I'm learning that it takes product to make things. And so I have to charge at least a little bit if I want to be successful. So um, not so long after I get home from the interview, it was a late night interview. So I have some friends, you know, texting me saying, oh, it was a great interview. You did a good job promoting yourself. Um, the podcast crew said that it was a good interview, that they enjoyed it. So I'm on a high. And I'm celebrating because this is like one of my first interviews, um, especially online. It was Facebook Live. I have no retakes or anything. So I was on a high because I felt like I did a great job. So I get this text message from a person who, you know, we've been friends for a while. And um, he is talking about that specific question and about how either um, I'm, either I was lying in my answer or I just like to give him a hard time. Because what happened was he purchased some things from me on his birthday, purchased, um, because there are things that I had to, I had to buy supplies. So yes, I, I, I charge, like I'm, I'm doing better. Yes, I do still give things away for free, but I don't like um, people who feel entitled 
Like you feel like I should give you something for free. Like if I want to bless you, I'm going to bless you. But don't just expect me to bless you or don't feel like you are entitled to that. So I charged him on his birthday. And then there was an incident where um, I don't know if he did it. I don't know if somebody else did it. I don't know if it was a bank error or a cash app error. But he had purchased something from me that was already consumed um, two months ago. And then I get a notification from Cash App that the charge had been disputed and that they were going to refund the purchase. Now, Cash App never contacted me to make sure that it was a legit purchase or anything. The person hadn't contacted me to say that they were dissatisfied. So I'm thinking we're good. So then I, I you know, contacted them and was like, what's up with this? Why did you request a refund for something that you ate two months ago? And he's like, oh, I didn't do that. I don't know what's going on. I said, well, you might want to contact your bank because somebody may have your information. Well, this person was very nonchalant about it. So that kind of was a red flag for me because it's like, well, if you didn't do that and you think that somebody has access to your bank account, I'm going to be trying to call my bank. Like That's the first thing that I'm going to do is I need to get to the bottom of this. So it wasn't like a big rush or anything to figure out what happened. So I'm thinking, hmm. This, this doesn't sound right. So, you know, he's like, well, I'll just bring you the money in cash so I can make sure that I um, get you paid. And I'm like, okay, um, yeah, you can bring that today because like I have had people to try to, to give me the runaround or whatever about products or, you know, I'll give them something and they're supposed to pay at a later date and it won't happen. Or I've had people to order desserts and then just not pick up. So I have new policies now that um, everything requires prepayment and pre-ordering. So, you know, we made an agreement that he was gonna bring the money over and then it's like late he hasn't shown up so where are you you know do I need to come and get my money long story short I ended up getting the money but in this text message he's talking about how I gave him a hard time about you know the money and the charging him on his birthday and my thing is you don't know what that refund did to my bank account what if I didn't have that money available and Cash App pulled the money out and now my account is negative. So you never thought about any of that. You just thought about how you felt in the situation and the fact that you feel like I did you wrong and that I'm lying about that I don't um, like to charge people. And I got to thinking, my friends, like all of my actual friends who love me and who care about me, I don't even have to ask them to pay. Like most times they're, you know, forcing me to take money or they will pay me before they even get the product. Like I'm, I'm now making essential oil blends and one of my friends, I just showed her the one that I was using for myself, which was um, a soothing scalp blend. So like if you have a dry, itchy scalp, I made one for myself and I let her try it. She already paid me the money before I could even get her oil made. Um, so in my opinion, like your friends are going to look out for you. They know the time that you spend creating products. They know the time that you spend on your business and they're not going to try to shortchange you. Yes, they may accept a blessing if you offer it, but true friends, true family members who care about you and your well-being are not going to automatically expect things for free and they're not going to get upset with you when you don't offer them things for free so I you know politely said please don't contact me again like not one time have you congratulated me on the interview not one time have you said anything positive but you made the entire situation about you and to me that's not a friend to me that's not a person who is going to support my growth or that's not a person who's happy for me so the higher i go i don't know what you know this person may bring out or what types of negative energy or negative vibes that they may um just even send to me or bring into my life and so i don't want that so i'm at the point now to where i'm able i'm learning to be able to release people and to let situations that are no longer serving me go because I know that it's not beneficial for me to keep around things that are not 
uplifting me or things that are are support things or people that are supporting me and um, encouraging my growth so how do you know when it's time to let somebody go and are you able to do that that's my question like what steps do you take do you have a conversation with that person or do you just kind of ghost them um, in this situation, I just said, you know, don't contact me anymore because this, like everything in my life doesn't revolve around you, um, you know, and I, I don't feel like you have my best interest in mind. So, and I haven't heard from them since. So what, you know, what do you do? And how do you handle situations like that? Before, I wasn't as strong to be able to do that. But, um, you know, yoga, meditation, um, chakra work. I really feel like just over this past year, my throat chakra has really opened up. And I've been able to speak up for myself. I've been um, more verbal and able to just communicate a lot better. So this is a really good season for me. So I need people around me who are supporting my growth and who are going to be happy for me and not just make it all about them. So let me know your thoughts. Um, you know, friends or foes, what, how do you handle those types of things?